Good morning YouTube. Uh, here's another update. I want to have a small topic today about dimensionally accurate parts. Um, I am, as, as you know from my previous videos, I am currently printing out my boron parts. I'm working on the, the clockwork and the stealth burner right now. And, um, you know, I've calibrated both my printers pretty well, but that was with PLA. And, uh, and, you know, you print these cubes out not just to see, you know, how stringing is and, you know, if there's ghosting or whatever. You also print this cube out to measure its dimensional accuracy. So this cube is meant to be measured 20 uh, millimeters on every axis. And you'll generally will get a slightly lower or higher value on your z axis usually it's maybe a slightly higher value than you will on your x and your y because you've got your first layer level sometimes those are a little thicker um, as well um, or thinner if you've got the first layer squished enough so generally it should should range around 20 millimeters or in the very very high 19s all the way around preferably 20 20 millimeters but you you do oh my god these dogs are crazy this morning i don't know where they are i, I see you hiding under there so um generally you want a hair under more than over uh, and the reason for that is for functional parts so um you don't want the taller if the tolerances are tight you don't want everything too large uh or too small but you do want a hair under um, so your fits are your fits are better. So you should make sure that you, of course, calibrate and make sure your rollers are, are tight but not too tight, and that your uh, you know your Z axis offsets all set and your E steps. But you also need to make sure your flow is calibrated for the material you're printing, because um, materials heat up, expand, and contract at different uh, different levels as they are uh, cooling off as well so and a prime example would be in my clockwork parts um these are like i believe these are the idler parts and there's two pieces and they have to mesh together appropriately i'm going to go with the first one let me see which one that is the first one which i actually printed on the um smooth surface of the bed came out with these really smooth sides but I was still having uh, bed adhesion so I did a brim and I don't like doing brims specifically on smaller parts because it makes it really difficult to clean them off and if you look at this one you know like the the little channel there where the uh, little access rods gonna go for the gear it's not particularly clean there's some clearance issues um, I had to heavily massage this just to even get it this far. And as you can see, it's not sitting flush. And it won't without forcing it. Even once you put the screw in, which is right here, it may bring it a little more. But it's not dimensionally accurate by any means. It's not even close, really. It'll probably work, but it'll probably be off. And I'll probably have extrusion problems, I think. So on my second print, I did it on the opposite uh, sheet. The textured side let me see if I can get it to which I kind of prefer the textured side it was a little bit better um, but not by much and I, I all I did was I adjusted my temps a little bit and of course didn't use a brim or anything so that made trimming a little easier but still it's this isn't gonna cut it especially when you're printing out your printer core components they got to be dimensionally accurate so my e steps and everything are good, um, but my flow rate's going to be different for ABS and PETG and TPU and and of course uh, your uh, your even even the same even the same materials in the generic brands are going to be different. You know, uh, even PLA will be different. So I reprinted it after I recalibrated my flow for ABS. And this is what I got. So here's the new parts. 
reprinted on the same bed material, the, r the rougher texture stuff. Let's see if I can get it to... And now even all the edges are sharper now, like they should be. They're actually, the edges are much smoother, even the sidewalls. And no gaps anymore. As a matter of fact, I didn't even have to modify this piece to get it to slide together. It was still stiff, but you kind of want that too. But it's dimensionally accurate. And that's what you want. And even the, the other arm that goes on it, which I also reprinted, I actually ended up reprinting all the parts. Uh, even that fits more appropriately now into the channel like it's supposed to. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Probably not. Hold on, let me put you down for a sec. All right, you can look at my glue stick for a little bit. Oh, or not, depends on if it holds up. Alrighty. So I believe the adjustment screw for the idler goes on. So this part, has to slide on that piece right there and it's at a little bit of an angle which I believe that's what it's supposed to be but now it's you know it's not too tight it's not too terribly loose I think it'll, it'll hold up and that's the way it's supposed to be and I reprinted the latch also and the prints are actually really good. Um, and I did the rest of, you know, the rest of these parts as well. Uh, I think that's a PCB spacer. And then I believe these are belt tensure hold downs. And I may or may not, it depends on how this meshes with the black parts I'm printing for the clockwork portion of it. I may uh, reprint this again too and see if I can, oh that's the old one, yeah that's the old one, let me reprint that, maybe that might even smooth out the walls even more, because I think technically I was over extruding a very small percentage, I think it was um, 8% is, is was my calculation for ABS on the Ender 3S1, and I'm printing it at this is Hatchbox ABS, I'm printing at 220 and 105. So everything else is normal speeds. So, and I'm doing the uh, back of that, and I'll do the tool head after when I'm done. But these are all the accent parts, I believe, for this portion of it, before I start getting into the main build parts. And it's very important that, you know, I, I knew right away, after the second one, I was like, okay, well this isn't too bad. And then I'm thinking to myself, but this is going to be bolted together, and it's going to, this is a moving part and another functional part that's going to get put together. And anything that's off is going to throw everything else off. And I felt at that point, i got to reprint these. So keep that in the back of your minds. Uh, make sure your flows are calculated as well as uh, the rest of your stuff. You might think everything else is printing just fine in, a, in a PLA or whatever material you normally print, but it's going to change. Uh, when you go to a different material and you should make a note of that and uh, be aware that you're going to want to re make readjustments so what i'm going to end up doing on this to make sure the rest of the parts are dimensionally accurate and clean and go together like they should is i'm going to um, wait till these prints are done until the tool hood prints are done and that should finish off the the uh the burner portion of it and then I will um, recalibrate everything again before I start printing the main parts just to make sure nothing is changed or is off I mean the printer was moved over here from my other desk so but other than that everything uh, seems to be going well so that's my progress so far um, end of the day I'll probably have the rest of the tool head done because uh, I think this print has got five hours on it for those two pieces so it's probably going to be about the same for the uh, tool head and the remaining parts for that I've also ordered the internals for this uh, even though I know a lot of this stuff's going to end up coming in the kit when I when I really order the kit 
Um, but uh, I guess in my mind, because it's giving me something to do, uh, it never hurts to have spare parts. So if I get another stepper motor for the extruder, that's fine. You know, all this is fine. I ordered the entire stainless fastener kits, all the connectors, all that stuff. I've already pre-ordered, so. Um, and that's pretty much where we're at. Alright guys, I'll talk to you later. If you have any comments, uh, leave them down below. Bye.